Today we're going to discuss 5 Flutter Flow tips that no one talks about that I've gathered after 5 years of Flutter and 2 years of Flutter Flow development. We'll start with a crucial principle. Always use components and action blocks. Just like in traditional coding, yeah, that's a thing now, where repeating the same line of code is a no-go. The drag and drop interface and everything being super easy may make you a bit lazy and you may want to cut some corners. But trust me, if you follow this principle, you'll not only make your project neater and easier to read, but also it will be far more manageable in the long run. Plus, you won't end up with an action chain or widget tree that everyone is scared to look at. So, after a lot of hours of work, your dream app is ready and you wanna publish it for the public. But before you hit that publish button, remember to enable all the analytics options on the settings page. These tools are invaluable for understanding user behavior and optimizing the UI. And trust me, your first few app versions will benefit from Crashlytics to iron out those initial bugs. If you wanna get fancier, you can log certain actions into Amplitude on some important pages like Paywall or Home page and etc. Use the inspection menu on your browser. It's your first line of defense against the issues you face all along the development journey. You can track all the error logs and the warnings and also the HTTP requests coming in and out of your app by just right clicking and selecting the inspect tool to see the logs. And then you can click on the network tab to see all the requests and their status. If that doesn't cut it, turn to VS Code. But why? Why would you do that? It's an amazing tool for debugging Flutter apps, making your development process much faster and more efficient. Firestore and in general Firebase have their own perks, especially with Flutterflow's great integration. Google is Flutterflow's number one investor, so they get special treatment. However, they are not one-size-fits-all solutions. For apps with heavy data usage or complex reporting needs or queries, you might want to consider switching to something like Superbase. Superbase's pricing strategy is very different and it offers a lot more capabilities so you don't have to hack together weird oh solutions to get that. Oh, Before we go to the next one, I wanted to tell you guys I've got a ton of these kind of tips and tricks ready to share. How many at all? 19. So this video is far from the last video of its kind. If you are into that, please consider subscribing and perhaps dropping a like on this video. Last but not least, avoid conditional text on the UI. Imagine setting up a text widget to display the status of an item. Initially, I used conditional text to change its content based on the item's status. At first glance, it seemed like an efficient way. However, when it came to time to prepare this app for international users, this approach backfired. The text simply wouldn't show up on the translation tab. To fix this, just duplicate the text widgets and show them conditionally, and use this approach from the beginning. It's a super simple yet useful tip that I learned the hard way, one that led to a lot of hours lost. As you can see, now they can be automatically translated by Flutterflow. And there you have it, 5 Flutterflow tips to elevate your app development journey. In this kind of videos, I try to bring up the unique tips that only come from experience. Feel free to drop your questions or experience in the comments below. With that, see you in the next video.